Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another video and today we'll be setting up the latest Hikvision wireless bridge and we're going to be doing a full setup, a bit of unboxing and quickly before we do that just quickly go over a few things and it's got some tips for you guys as well. Okay, so a nice little video here but before I go into that I must uh, let you guys know about some news that's come in. Uh, unfortunately this will be my last video for SSR trading here on YouTube as I... Um, will be leaving and moving on to another company I'm afraid so um, unfortunately I know a lot of people uh, like these videos but the good news is guys uh, the company I'm going for does have a YouTube channel and I will be making more YouTube videos doing exactly the same things hopefully but hopefully even maybe taking it to the next level so keep an eye out guys I will be back uh, and I'll, I have to save all of the comments and all the videos, but I'm gonna try and leave this one open So if you've got any comments, please feel free to let me know below and I can always check them out. Okay, so now let's get on with the video and um, We can uh, you can see from the the diagram here that we got a basic setup here So I'm not gonna be talking about wireless bridges too much guys how they all work. Okay, it's a point-to-point -point system Okay, imagine an invisible cable in the sky that's what it is okay so a typical example of where you might use a wireless bridge is if you have two buildings okay so they're about maybe 500 meters away the other building and you, you've got your central building with all your cctv recording equipment there and you, you don't want to spend more money on an mvr and all that stuff so you you want to be able to send over the signals from a couple of cameras all the way to your main signal to your main um, network and uh, record on there okay this is what a bridge can do all right so we're going to be doing a simple simple setup just one bridge but you can have multiple bridges all going back to one point or you can have multiple points with multiple bridges and we'll talk about all this coming up okay so when you do decide to set up a bridge you're going to have two options to make each each bridge um, basically an AP or a CPE okay an AP means it's going to be the ax well I call it access point I'm not too sure what it means and it's going to be the the bridge that goes on your basically your main building on your network side where your NVR will be your switches will be your recording equipment okay I might refer to it as NVR because that's what most people would use but it doesn't have to be necessarily um, and then you've got your CPE side which is going to be your camera side okay so this is the one where you're going to connect your cameras you can have multiple cameras um it, you're limited to the bandwidth um which uh which you can check out i'll leave a link to the um the spec sheet below for the for the for the bridge and you can check out all the specs uh but you can you, you can do quite a few cameras no problem and and i think that pretty much wraps it up okay so also make make sure your ssid must be the same we've got a, a diagram coming up on the next page about ssid so i think we'll go there now so you can understand a little bit more about how the setup works and i've got some tips as well guys all right so on each bridge you have uh some dip switches as you see in the in the diagram so you've got a c you can make it cpe or ap so you want to have one ap which is going to be your main point and the say for example you're going to have three three bridges all pointing back to the one ap great so if that will be one network, make sure they're all on the same SSS ID. Okay, that basically means all the DIT switches must match on, on all the units on that network. Now, for example, you said you had two buildings and you want to have two separate networks. Then you would have two separate SSIDs for those two separate networks so they don't get confused. Okay, that's what it's basically for. Okay, so you can have multiple networks going and the signals are not going to interfere with each other. Okay. So that's that's how you set the dip switches up. We'll be I'll quickly show you them when we do uh, an unboxing. Um, but right now, let's qu quickly go over the tips I got here, guys. And the first main tip is whatever you do, do not go ahead and mount these up, or especially on a big pole or on a big building, without setting them up first, guys. I mean, it's it doesn't take long to set them up. You can quickly plug them into a laptop on site or do them at home on your workbench and set them up, and then get them all pre-configured, ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that in the video. Now, when you set them up, guys, you must use IVMS 4200, not SADP tool. I tried SADP tool to try and be clever and try to save some time, and they didn't work. Okay, so there's a feature on IVMS where you have to accept the terms and conditions when you add the device. 
If you do not accept those terms and conditions, the device will not work. Okay, so we're going to obviously look at that um, in the setup coming up. And and each device comes with this adapter, as you see in the picture of the adapter. It has your 12 volt DC. You've got LAN one, LAN two, and one of them is uh, passive PoE port. So you might see a lot of uh, information that it says, "Oh, PoE, great." It's not true PoE, guys. It's called something called passive PoE, and it is. It, it's not PoE, okay? Simple as that, okay? So you need an adapter to make it PoE. But well, what the adapter's for, guys, I'm not 100% sure, but what I've realized it's for is basically if you're mounting this device on, say, a massive long pole, okay? And then you're doing the maintenance for the site. Do you want to get up on that ladder and have to maintain this device on top of a high building or top of a high pole and go there, change the cameras, change, unplug things? No, you don't want to do that. So what you do is you get this adapter and you can run it as basically an extension to the bottom of the the Wi-Fi bridge. Okay, so it's the same. You've got the same ports here. You don't have the switches, no, but you probably don't need to touch those, uh, the dip switches. But but what you could do is you can have your junction box at the bottom of the pole and you can put this little adapter in there. Maybe you've got a switch in there, you've got a power supply, whatever you got in there. So any time you need to plug in something, you can just go to that junction box plug it in and you don't have to get up a ladder and access the, the bridge directly. You know, sometimes you might have to even, you know, uh, dis dis dismount the, uh, the bridge, un unplug the little hatch. I mean, it's a real pain. But with this little adapter, and if you've got it all set up right, I'm sure it's gonna be handy for some guys out there, all right? So I think that pretty much comes up, uh, summarizes, you know, the basics of how this bridge works and a few of the features. So let's go ahead now to a quick unboxing and see what see what you get inside and then we're gonna go and set it up on IVMS. Okay guys, see you there. Alright then, so this is uh the wireless bridge. Let me quickly show you the box guys. As you see here, a few more details there. And there's nothing that's special about the box really. Actually, there is a nice little image at the back. There's the model number guys. And you have got this image at the back that shows you your AP and CPE setup and your SSID example. Okay. Anyway, that's just the box, guys. So let's show you what comes in it. Obviously, you get the standard instructions, which we don't, I'm not going to use. Uh, we have our bridge, obviously. We have our power supply. Uh, please note this is a European one that came in the box. So obviously, we supply our customers with UK ones, but do double check. Um, you might uh, be getting a European one by mistake. You never know. Okay, and we have the adapter that I was mentioning earlier. And we have a nice little thick cable tie. Okay, we'll put that to the side. And that's pretty much it. All right, so we're not gonna use this power supply. I mean, we're gonna use a, a normal power supply, uh, but not the European one. But before we go look at the bridge, I'll show you the adapter quickly. All it is is you've got a 12 volt DC. You've got, there is a bit of writing on here, but it's in white, so you probably can't see it but it says PoE and LAN, okay? So PoE and LAN. And here is the bridge, okay? So not much on the outside, just your regular mounting bracket. We have our indicator lights on the side. And if you pop this open here, okay. Okay, it kind of slides out, no, not very, not very well, I do, not very good at doing that, but um, as you see here, some more details. So this one's going to be set to AP, we've got our SSIDs, we've got a PoE LAN, LAN 2, reset button, and 12 volt DC. And I'll just quickly tell you about the reset button guys, really easy to use. Just plug it in, power it up, hold it down for a few seconds, you'll see the lights flash, and it'll be reset, okay? You really couldn't get an easier reset button. All right, so I'm going to quickly plug up our two, two bridges and I'll show you the setup and then we'll go to IVMS and set it all up. Okay, so here's our setup to configure these bridges. As you see, I've plugged in the bridges just with a 12 volt power supply, powering each one. And you see on the, light, on the right hand side, we've got the light come on. And we're going to be using a router to set this up. Now, if you did want to use PoE, you would obviously need to use the adapter, 
which can uh, change it to PoE and you need a PoE switch but for, for this demo we're going to be using direct power and we're going to be using direct connection to the router okay so let's go ahead and plug in, plug in everything and I'll show you the settings on our devices so plug that in there and as you see we have all, all the dip switches down on this one okay this is going to be the uh, AP which is going to be the access point for the NVR or the recorder whatever you have and plug in the second one as you see here we have the dip switches one up and the rest down so when it comes to SSID like I said it doesn't matter providing they match it doesn't matter which one you use okay so for example let's just let's change it for the purposes of this demo let's put one up Okay, we've got one up and the rest down. So let's do the same on the other one. One up and the rest down. Okay. So that's going to be our SSID for this little configuration. Now, if you want to have a second one, you just do something different. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. So now we also have one green cable, which is connected to the laptop. So now I'm going to go ahead and go on IVMS and hopefully we should find the bridges and be able to configure them. I'll catch you there. Okay, so we're on IVMS now guys, and as you can see here, we've got our two bridges. They're inactive, they haven't been configured at all, and the standard IP address, which we're gonna change, okay? So let's go ahead and activate them. So it's just a, a password. Okay. So it doesn't matter which bridge is which, you don't have to worry about anything like that for this part, this process. Oh, the boot time 1970. Interesting. Okay, so that one's activated. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little trick. We're going to enable DHCP. Now, if you don't know what DHCP, it will sign an automatic IP address. And we kind of really want a static IP address for these. So, once it's assigned an IP address here, what we're going to do then is just disable DHCP. And, but we're going to keep the IP address it gives us, okay? So we know that one's good, but it's now static, okay? It shouldn't change. And we do exactly the same thing on the other device. All right, so now we label DHCP again and it should give us a different IP address to the last one probably one digit ahead and refresh and now I so see we've got 101 102 but this is on DHCP so we just disable that and it will leave that, stat that IP static so it won't change okay all right so that's our IP address is done password is done now all we have to do is add the devices to the main um, the main panel okay so we do that by going add and we just call it a name I just call it bridge one admin and the password you just created and we go add okay so this is the important bit so if you do not accept these terms and conditions the bridge is not going to work guys and for some reason when you go to united kingdom it's got great britain instead there so under it goes u t u g i uh, i don't know what's going on but anyway select great britain and then click on accept the, the tick box i have read all that yep Okay, it takes a few seconds, then you go OK. And now that bridge is configured, guys. That is literally the configuration. There is nothing else to do. Okay, I'll have a quick look. I'll show you the panel in a minute. But let's quickly go over to the second one. And I don't know, we're going to add. So I'll call it bridge two. And the password will be the same from before. So we just go add. And yes, yeah, we have to do the same on this one as well. Great Britain, I have read the terms, yes. Okay, you should read this, guys, but I'm sure you're not interfering with other people's frequencies and things like that. If you are, please be careful. Okay, I have read it, okay. Okay, they're both now should be configured, okay. We're going to go check it in the live view in a second, but 
Let me quickly show you what happens when you log onto a device. You've got the standard things here, you know, default, network options, advanced settings, wireless configuration, guys. I don't go into this, so uh, if you want some more advanced settings, there's a quick look at the, at the menu. All right, guys. But that's the setup down, done now. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's working when I go to the live view. Let's go check it out now. Okay, so this is our setup here. And as you see here, we still got this one connected to our network side, which is how it should be. And I've unplugged the cable from here. And then straight away, the lights came on for the signal. As you can see now, when you see those signal lights, that means it's all good to go. All right, that means they're paired, they've linked up. As you see here, the signal. It's not going to green, but oh no, it's just the light is not very clear to see. Okay, there you go, green light. All right. So that's pretty straightforward, guys. Now you have to unplug the second one, obviously, take it off the network, and then the then, then they will pair together. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video, okay? So like I said before at the beginning of the video, unfortunately, this is my last video here at SSR, guys. So I'm going to say my goodbye now, but it's been great um, making YouTube videos for you guys, and the support has been absolutely fantastic. I would also like to thank... Shokar here at SSR Trading, he's been a great inspiration for me and hopefully he'll be getting in someone new to keep up the good videos. Um, so big thanks to SSR, uh, but unfortunately now my time, is to move, my time has come to move on and I'm just going to say goodbye to all my fans and viewers and um, I definitely will be back hopefully and I will see you then. Alright then guys, so goodbye for the last time and thank you. Bye bye.